Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Book Review. So, I got a great episode for you guys today. We're gonna explore deep fakes. So, this title that we're gonna do is specifically gonna dive into the contents, the topics, the building blocks of how to create a deep fake objects. So, with that being said, let's first start by talking about the author. So, there are two authors, Brian Leong and Matt Tora. Both of them have 15 plus experience in the industry as well as taking on some of the leading engineer position in some of these large companies working on all sorts of different computer vision projects such as VFX, face swap, so on and so forth. So Matt and Brian, if you guys are watching the video, thank you both so much for this fantastic book. Me personally, I learned a lot. I do this for my grad school, I do this for my job, I have a good amount of knowledge of OpenCV library, Python, TensorFlow, and how to use them together in a way to do most of the computer vision stuff, but not to the level of VFX or face swap technology, uh, certainly not at the level of deep fake. So I thought this is a fantastic opportunity for me to explore this field that I'm passionate about much deeper. And it's safe to say that this book gets that job done, right? So with that being said, let's dive into the content of today's video. So part one starts off with just simply on a high level understanding what this is about, right? So specifically chapter one, we start by surveying what's out there, right? What can be done using deep fakes and what that technology means for the society, for the machinery community, and also uh, just a general crowd. And then on top of that, chapter two would immediately talk about the ethics behind this type of technology. Of course, if you look at the technical perspective, the face swaps or deep fakes is really just, you take a picture frame, you change a certain portion of the picture frame to something else. That technology by itself is neutral. There's no strict good or bad about that. It's dependent on who and how this person is using it that creates good and bad connotation. So right off the bat, I just want to say that this book really lays out the foundation of that understanding before we even dive into the modeling, the data processing, and so on and so forth, which I really appreciate because it sets a tone, right? It sets a tone of what kind of moral ethic do we need to talk about? So right off the bat, the most important thing that I will say this book laid out is first to understand the data and second to understand the system. And then on top of that, you can talk about what package you want to use and how to implement that and all that come after. But in the beginning, you first of all need to understand the data. You need to have full control of the data. You need to know what exactly is it that you're working with. And then you need to understand the direction, right? That's what the system diagram is doing for you. It tells you what's the first step, what's the second step, and so on and so forth. So first of all, let's talk about data. Data is, of course, going to be the picture frame where there's a person's face inside, right? That's what deep fakes is mostly doing and mostly working around, which is the person's face that is changing. So what that means is you will need to understand how camera angle and what camera angle is doing to the person's face uh, when a person is posing in front of the camera. And if I change my face into a certain angle, it creates a shadow, the shadow from your nose, shadow from other parts of your face, as well as uh, where the light is behind the camera. So all those things matter. And if you want to really create a realistic outcome video or outcome film, now, obviously, all these things need to be taken into consideration. And uh, you can pretty much guess that if you have not taken these into consideration, then the outcome video that you created obviously won't be realistic. So number one thing I want to say, and this is coming from my own experience as well as reading this book, is you need to have full control and full understanding of your data. And that's, of course, built upon certain moral ethical understanding of what project is it that you're doing 
So then, here comes the next part. First of all, you need to have the data. And then second of all, you need to have an idea what you want to do with the data. Now, having the data is easier said than done, right? Because you need to think about what exactly is the type of model that you're building. For simplicity, let's say you have a picture. And let's say I take a picture of my own face. And then this facial area, I want to swap to something else. Let's say my cat, right? Then what that means is in the data processing part, the data training part, I need to have at least two pictures. One picture is a picture of my own face and the other picture is a picture of my cat. And then I need to somehow crop the area of where my face is and then swap that area with the pixelated value of my cats because pictures is what? It's three slices of matrices, right? Uh, they have width, height, and most pictures are RGB. That means it's a color picture, red, green, blue. Uh, so you have your color slice, so depth of the picture. Altogether, you have width, height, and depth. Uh, all those pixels in those matrices that fall in this facial area obviously need to be changed and updated. So fundamentally, the action of updating that pixel uh, is essentially creating a new picture. Face swap or deep fake takes a step further. It's not just update any pixel value randomly, however you want. It's that you update it in a way that it looks real, it looks like another person, right? So here we are uh, prepping for this project. We need to have the right data set. So what that means is I can create an input video such that this is my face and my face is the, in the middle 60% of the picture frame. And then the first scene I'm looking up, the second scene I'm looking left, then that's the only thing I can do. And let's say that's the only thing that I did for the input video. And then when you create that output video, you better find another person that kind of look like the faces in the center 60% of the picture frame. And then they better be looking up first for the first scene and then looking left for the second scene. Because if those things don't match, then the video won't look realistic. So all those things matter. And it is up to you, the data scientist and the machine learning scientist, to figure out how the camera angle works. So that when you are creating that input video and output video, the facial pixelated value can line up in a more realistic way. Because think about it, if my input video I'm looking up for the first scene and the output video the other actor or actress is looking left, then obviously we're looking at different angle. So the direction that your face is pointing at, it's not really the same as where your eyes are looking. That's of course a problem. So data quality is the most important thing that you have to pay attention to when you handle this kind of projects. So now you have your input video so now you have your input video and your output video, and you can talk about setting up some sort of neural network model that take the input video and change the pixel into something else that look like the output video, right? And that's precisely when the image to image network comes in. So what that means is your good old school image to image model, right? You can start with variational autoencoder. You can then talk about image segmentation, such as UNET, right? And right now we have more advanced models than UNET, and they've been pretty much upgraded for many, many times. And these models are all out there. And it gets, and it simply, and these models are simply doing one job. It's taking one image and then create another image based on that input image. And as long as your data is collected and processed correctly, that input output pair matched up then guess what? You will have an easier model to train for. If they do not match up, you're going to have a low accuracy or poor performance, and then you're going to have to come back and say, hey, look, this model is not that accurate. Mm, let's perhaps recollect our data, reprocess our data, and then do it again. Right? You want to somehow mitigate that risk of going through that cycle many, many times. And mark my words, that's going to be very important because as what this book suggested, right? What does this book do in the beginning? Please, please, please install GPU, right? 
and it's like a big chapter of just teaching you how to get that done. Why on earth do we need to worry about that? Well, you're dealing with images, so you're not going to be using CPU because it's extremely slow. You're going to be using GPU because that's a graphic card in your computer that handles two-dimensional arrays. So it's kind of like built for the purpose of handling that matrix operation in a more speedier way. So there's a lot of software engineer, there's a lot of installing and uninstalling packages that you have to get used to. And you can also work out the complementary GitHub repo related to this book uh, to figure that out. So before I wrap this up, I just want to say the workflow is the most important thing because it points at directions. And then the implementation is the how, and you can figure that out next step. Last but not least, of course, I have to share with you guys a little implementation myself that I've done before, right? And look in the bottom of the screen, I have a small animation of a face swap myself that I've done a while ago that is kind of following the idea of this book, which I thought was interesting to share with you guys. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Deepfakes is a real technology out there that can be a double-edged sword. Uh, and I hope that this content of this video can give you a good amount of knowledge to show you what this book is about. And then to wrap this up, I just want to say I enjoy reading this book a lot and I highly recommend it. So if you like the channel, give a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.